everyone and welcome to the Chef's Table series. My name is Carol O'Connor, co-host of this instructional and engaging cooking TV show. Today on the show we have Chef Padam of Himalayan Bistro located in West Roxbury. He will teach us how to make chicken momos. Then later on the show we'll have the wine that's going to be paired with this dish as well as my restaurant interview with owner Ram Detel. We are here at the Sons of Italy Hall, so let's go over to Joe and Chef Padam to learn the secret of how to make this delicious dish. Hi, I'm Chef Joe Murphy. I'm with the Chef's Table Foundation, a nonprofit created to uh, help underprivileged young people that may want to attend a culinary school, as well as we will be supporting homeless veterans. And there are 1,000 documented homeless U.S. veterans in the state of Massachusetts. So I'm very pleased to say that we have a wonderful chef He's from Nepal originally, is that right? Right. And it's Chef Padam, that's his first name, so we're just going to stick with that. I'll get tongue-tied if I try to say your last name, so <laughs> we'll just say Chef Padam. And uh, I had talked to Chef a couple of weeks ago, and he was really looking forward to coming. And we were talking earlier, Chef, about the difference between Himalayan cuisine, which is basically, it's Indian, but they use less spice, less heat, less... Spice, less oil, and the tea is thin. Mm -hmm. We can use in Nepal. Okay, yeah. good. So th there is quite a bit of difference. And w in Nepal, a chef was explaining to me that on their vegetables, they don't cook them as long, for instance, as Indian cuisine does. So you have more of the nutrients staying in. Those vegetables aren't destroyed by overcooking them, right? Right. Yeah, so that's great. Yeah. And he's also been in, in Italy, cooked there, is that right? Yeah, I'm working there before American and European cruise line. Oh, uh, on a cruise line? Yeah, cruise Good. line. Good. Mm -hmm. Not one of those cruise lines that get stuck in the middle of the ocean. Oh, no. 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but I have been in the Titanic, you know, the Titanic. Craft. Oh, the Titanic? Yeah, they, that, that place I have been there. Oh, have you? Yeah. Good, good. <laughs> well, interesting life. Well, uh -huh. you've been here for three years. How long have you been in America? Three years. Three years. Good for you. Well, we're Thank glad you're here. Why don't we talk about, and as far as I'm concerned, it's the most important step. And the French term is mise en place, which means everything in its place. So that when you're ready to do the actual cooking, you want to have all your products laid out. So, Chef, would you tell us what you have here for ingredients? Yeah, I have the cumin and coriander powder. Okay. This one in uh, black pepper. Black pepper. And the chili powder. Ooh. Uh, ginger garlic paste. This is ginger and garlic. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the, uh, this one is a uh, chopped red onion. Okay. We just want to show this to the viewing audience. Yeah. Okay. And uh, this one is a scallion. Scallion, or also known as green onion. Yeah. And the cilantro. Oh, cilantro. Is cilantro common in Nepal? Yeah, yes. In Nepal, we can use the cilantro too. Yeah, uh, because, you know, in Spanish cooking or South American cooking, mm -hmm. cilantro is a mainstay. For instance, as Italians, we use a lot of parsley, cilantro. Yeah, okay. and all the Mexican cuisine, they can use the cil a lot of cilantro. Okay. And the soy sauce. Soy sauce. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I, I just want to make one comment. In Asian cooking, there are two ingredients that are mixed together and they're a mainstay. And we had an, another Indian restaurant on recently, and I was surprised to hear that exactly what you talked about, a garlic and ginger blend. And that's a fine chop or dice, I should say. And you just equal parts, 
Do you use mix equally the yeah. ginger and the garlic? Right. Okay, which, and I'll tell you, it's really great yeah. in your cuisine. And it doesn't really have to be Asian cooking, Indian cooking, Nepal cooking. Nepal. It, it's really, as you experience different, even American, this will really bring your finished dish up to a, a, a much nicer level. Okay, mm -hmm. chef, just curious, what is this? Is this the uh, tomato chutney, it's called tomato chutney. Okay. It's made for the tomato and cilantro, ginger garlic, and the sesame seed inside. Oh, okay. Wow, looks great. Yeah, if you don't mind, I just want to take a little sniff. Oh, of course. Mm, smells absolutely delicious. Mm -hmm. And you have something covered here, what is this? It's a chicken, uh, chicken mince. Oh, minced chicken. Right. Okay, good. All right. Can I help you? Yeah, that would be okay. great. Okay. So that's, oh, I see. So you put that in the dumpling. So you yeah. really mince that. Yeah, it's the phrase. I, I make the phrase all ingredients here and mix it well. Yeah. And then I can seal the, in the wrapper. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. All right, now you use a wrapper. What is this wrapper? This is almost like a... Uh, like a ravioli wrapper, mm -hmm. like in Chinese cooking. No, we can made in the fresh with flour, salt, and water. Okay. But here, I'm gonna use this ready-made uh, dumpling wrapper. It's okay. So let me ask you a question: Is is this an Indian wrapper, or is this Chi Can you get this in a Chinese store? Yeah. I think that's the question I'm asking because it, it looks like the Chinese dumpling wrapper as well. Yeah. Uh, in, in our restaurant, we can use the fresh wrapper, right? Yeah. But here, it's a very difficult to make the wrapper. Yeah. That's, gonna, that's why I'm going to use that one. Great. So, Chef just gave you a great tip. If, uh, we're not going to make the dough for the wrapper because it would take too long. But you can pick these up in a good Asian store and it and works the, just as well, right? Yeah. Okay. So, and I've used this before myself, making uh, Peking raviolis at home, and they really work great. So, are there any other ingredients? I see you've got oh, some oil. There's a corn oil. Corn, you use corn oil? Yeah. Okay. Any particular reason why you use corn oil instead of, uh, you know, a different type oil? Yeah, yeah bef uh, in our restaurant, they have a a lot of customers, uh, they, uh, they have an allergy. Oh. Uh, they, uh, if we use the other oils, yeah. they, they have to know okay. what kind of oil you use. Everybody say, use corn oil, it's good. Yeah, it That's is. the reason yeah. I use the corn oil, right. and sometimes I use olive oil. Olive oil, uh. yeah, okay. Well, you know, one thing about corn oil, it, you do, it has a flavor to it, yeah. as opposed to a canola oil. I love to cook with olive oil, but with the different oils, you just have to have a basic understanding of how it heats up. Olive oil has a very low temperature yeah. tolerance, and you know, if you don't watch it, it'll smoke and burn a little bit. But corn oil has a much higher smoke uh, level than olive oil. Oh, yeah. But I do like this myself. I, I blend, and I learned this from a fellow who does what we call Chef's Tip of the Week. Mm -hmm. Uh, Steve LeCount, and uh, he mixes canola oil mm -hmm. and corn oil. He mixes them together, and he finds it really works well. So I do that too on occasion. So what else do we have going here? That's the spaghetti. Uh, it's for the garnish. Oh, you use it for a garnish. Yep. So it's it's regular thin spaghetti. Yep. And it's dried, yeah, and you yeah. use the dry for the garnish? Yeah, just for the garnish. For presentation? Yeah. Okay, I don't know, you know, it, it's so thin, I don't know if we can see this on the camera, but it's just regular spaghetti. Mm -hmm. All right, good. All right, so Chef, what is the first dumpling we're going to make tonight? Uh, firstly, uh, we have to boil the water here. Yeah. And the, for the steam. Oh, yeah. So the water is going to be boiled. Okay. And the second, yeah. I have a chicken wings, uh, th uh, 32 ounce chicken wings. Okay, 32 ounces of minced chicken. Yep. I'll take all your I'll empties, Chef. Ten. Okay. Now, and one I of the things Chef was telling me prior to the show, 
Another difference between uh, Nepal cooking and Indian cooking, they use, it's somewhat, it's a bit healthier. They don't use very much oil. They use, do a lot of steaming. It's steaming, yeah. Yeah, you do use oil, but not deep fried. Oh, is that how it yeah. is? Okay, it's a le le less oil. Less oil, mm -hmm. okay, great. And right. after, I'm going to put two spoons of ginger garlic paste here. Okay, so that's two teaspoons of the ginger, ginger garlic, garlic paste. Blend and 32 ounces of chopped chicken. Yep. Okay. And uh, chili powder. That's hot, right? Yeah. It's a uh, half a spoon. Right. And remember, cooking is TT, to taste. If you do not like heat, you don't have to put it in. If you like a lot of heat, put as much as you think you can stand. Yeah. And the uh, black pepper. Okay. If you like uh, more spice, you can put more. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just a pinch of black pepper. Okay. And coriander and cumin powder. You mix them? Yeah, it's a homemade. Oh, wow. Yeah. You grind them yourself? Yes. Wow. Uh, two spoons. Two teaspoons. Two teaspoons. Okay. And chop onion. Yeah. That's a That's uh, small dice red onion. Yeah. And uh, two spoon, mm -hmm. two tablespoon. Right. And uh, chop scallion. Right. Two tablespoon. Wow. Cilantro. It's I love Carol loves the smell of cilantro. Oh. She just loves it in a dish, and I, I enjoy it myself. It really two, adds another flavor. Two teaspoon. Two teaspoons, okay. And the soy sauce. Soy sauce. Three. Now, do you use a, a light sauce, low sodium, or do you use reg just regular? Sauce? No, this the low sodium. Okay. Yeah. Three spoon. Yeah. Mm. You know, a chef was chef. explaining the, the recipe. I was looking and I said, gee, there's no salt. But there's your salt right there in, in your uh, soy sauce. I prefer to use the low sodium myself, and it's, to me it has a better flavor profile. It doesn't overtake your palate with too much salt, so. Yeah. Mm. so uh, salt no. for uh, to taste, okay? If you like more right. salt, you can right. put more salt. Yeah. Otherwise, just one right. and a half teaspoon. Okay, now just remember, Chef just used the TT to taste. So if you have a sodium aversion, you can eliminate that where you're using the soy sauce, uh, soy sauce, okay? And the other thing I want to make a note of, when we had another Indian restaurant here yeah. uh, a month or so ago, they use regular table salt. Do you use table salt, kosher salt, or sea salt? I use the table salt. Table salt, that's what they used. Oh. So is that common in Indian Himalayan cooking or from Nepal? Exactly, yeah. Okay, interesting. All right, chef. Okay. What's next, you mix it? Yeah, I have all ingredients here. Yeah. Now I'm gonna mix it here. Okay. Well, well chef's mixing, I, you know, there was something I was thinking about. I wanna explain th what dice is. If you're in a professional kitchen, you know, the chef says, dice some red onion. Okay, chef. Small dice, medium dice, large dice. This is close to a small dice. Medium is maybe a little bit over a quarter of an inch. And then when you get into a large dice, obviously it's a, you know, three eighths. Beyond that, it's considered a chop. So if you see chop in a recipe, uh, then they're looking for more a uh, rustic type uh, size ingredients. So just keep that in mind. You have small dice, medium dice, large dice, and then you have the mince, which is really making a very, very fine dice. And that's what the chef did with this garlic, okay? Okay, chef, it's done. Okay. Now I'm going to make the momos. Very good. 
Okay, Chef, I'll okay. take that. Thank you very much. Yeah, very welcome. Okay. Okay. Now, this is the dumpling wrapper. Yeah. I'm gonna put in the water okay. here. For yeah. the if you put water, it's gonna be the nice seal. Yeah. Here. Right. Yeah, and Chef just gave you a tip. If you're using this type of a wrapper or any type of a wrapper, you want to dip it in the water so that when you close it up, you're going to get a firm seal. It's not going to break open. Yeah, when you steam, it's not broken. Right. Okay, I'm going to use the one spoon from here. Yeah. And then when you make the momos, you can put one and half. One and a half teaspoon. Half, yeah. Okay. And then just make fast, make like this. Well, yeah, press. It so people can see it. Okay. Make like this, and after you just this, keep pinching it. Pinch it, yeah. And make like this, this, like that, like that. Uh, chef, I'm gonna make different types types of momos, not only one. Okay. This is different varieties, like of... Right. And then you shape it in the yeah. crescent yeah. when it's done. Yeah. So can I see that, yep. Chef? So you see, it, it really looks like a Peking ravi ravioli. So when you're doing it, you start at one end and just keep pinching all the way. And make sure that that uh, wafer uh, noodle, I was going to call it, you know, is wet. Okay, so yeah. you're doing another one, you yeah. said. In Nepal, we have a variety, varieties like the momos. It's a different one. Some one is called kote, it's a round one. Yeah. And the, some one is a vegetable. We can make the different one. I'm going to show you the others, others one. Is it the same filling with a different shape? Or? Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, different fillings, different shape. If you make the basil momo, we can make the different shape. Okay. Uh, if you have a chicken momo, we make like that. I see. The vegetables, Momo, yeah. we make the different kind of okay. types. Now, is that a, would be shape of a vegetable, Momo? Yeah. Or is that it's like, a, uh, you know, the... Oh, oh wow. That's that. interesting. Yeah. Wow. So that's the shape of a golf tee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or an exclamation point when I run overtime. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I show you the other ones. The, yeah. It's called... Uh, Kote mama. Kote mama. Kote. It's, uh, it's a meaning is kote means half steam yeah. and half oil. Half oil. No deep fry. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Make like this, this. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's, 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 it's called kote. Kote. Yeah, kote. It almost shaped like a tortellini. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but he, the way he did it, uh -huh. it has, uh, oh God, almost like wavy uh, curls, but it's very interesting looking. Now, this one, you steam and half fry? Y yeah, first steam. Yeah. And uh, almost done cooking, right? Yeah. And we're gonna f half, uh, half fry. Okay. Just. Fry in the, the bottom. bottom yeah. Right, so you don't need a lot of oil. This goes yeah. back to the that's healthier the, cuisine. That's the healthy, yeah, healthy cuisine. Okay, excellent. All right, can we steam these? Yeah, up? I can make more. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. 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 You want to try this, Chef? No, you can, you're doing a great <laughs> job. <laughs> <laughs> it's very easy, right? Yeah. If we know, <laughs> you know, in the Nepal, one time we have a mama practice, mama competition. Really? Yeah, that time I get the first position. Really? Yeah, this, the, uh, the chef told me the chef is very nice. Wow. Yeah. So they give you a one-way ticket to America to get rid of you? You <laughs> Absolutely. Showing everybody up? <laughs> yeah. <but> yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. And this is like, like you said, the, the Japanese, the Peking, ra oh, sorry, the Chinese, the Peking raviolis, or the Italian, you know, raviolis. This is all handwork, right? Yeah, it's a handle. Okay, great. Now, I want to ask you a question. Are we going to just steam these? Are we going to 
now we going to steam. Steam. Yeah. In, in the one plate we have eight or eight pieces, right? I'm going to make eight, then we're going to go steam. Oh, okay. Very good. Yeah. Well, I'm going to see if you win the competition for speed <laughs> so that we can get these cooking. Oh, okay. Our audience is, they're putting their bibs on. I think they're getting hungry. <laughs> yeah, these, these are great shapes. You know, I never ate really a lot of Indian food, you know, Himalayan type food, which I guess is close to, pretty close. And I just felt there was so much garlic and so many spices. I just didn't, but I've been eating it lately and I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I actually had some goat recently, which kind of threw me off, but a goat is an old sheep, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> in, in, in Nepal, you know, in Nepal there's a lot of uh, Himalaya, right? Yeah. If the people, they feel very, very cold, they make, they make the soup momos. Oh, yeah. When they're climbing the mountain, yeah. that time they eat a lot of the momos, soup momos. Oh. It's make hot, no? Nice dumpling. Yeah. 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 Okay, so now I'm going to steam the momo. Excellent. Yeah, it's a boil. It's boiling now. Oh yes. Yeah. And uh, just a little bit mm -hmm. oil oh, oh. here. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, so you put that right on the the steam basket. Yeah. The oil. Yeah. It, if we put the oil, it's is. Excuse me, chef. Sorry, I was going to ask chef. you a question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, in Nepal, is the number seven mean eight? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was confused. No, no, okay. No, no. Oh, it's okay. I will make one. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking to eat it now. <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> you may find me in a ditch after. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Carol and I, we got into the food thing okay. and we met and we're both foodies i just love this i don't know what it is it's i guess it's like an artist who loves to paint i just love to be around food <laughs> wonderful chefs like you Thanks. and you can take a joke without punching me in the face <laughs> okay yeah okay uh, now it's the water is boiling yeah excellent I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the momos here one, two, three. <laughs> eight. Eight. He yeah. does count to eight. 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 Very good, Jack. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then after cover. Right. Now, I have a question. We have the Momo eight yeah. in there. How long do you cook this or steam it? And Five to six minutes it takes. It's done. Yeah. And the chicken will be cooked all the way through. Yeah, but we have to boiling the water. Right. After five to six minutes. Very it's, good. Yeah, I'm gonna make the big flan. Okay. Yeah, because this is raw chicken. Yeah. So be sure you give it that. I'd give it six minutes if it was me. And if you decide to have two eights, which in America is 16, mm -hmm. I would do 17 and take one out and cut it in half just to check it, mm -hmm. to make sure that it's cooked through. Uh, yeah. You know, and there is a technique for telling doneness, and it's usually used on steak, and little finger is well done. Medium. Medium, right. Rare. Medium, rare, rare. Yeah. And you may be able to do this, but where it's chicken, I would cut one in half mm -hmm. until you really understand, you know, the doneness to be sure, so you don't get sick. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm sure there must be some sort of a special sauce for this, is there? Yeah, we have a, we have a um, momo chutney achar there. Oh, the momo chutney, okay, yeah. right. Well, that smells delicious. Mm -hmm. Now, is there any sweetness in this N chutney? No, no sugar? No or sugar. Honey, nothing? No. Uh, inside, tomato, yeah. ginger garlic, yeah. coriander and cumin, yeah. powder, 
Right. And the cilantro yeah. and the sesame seed inside. Okay. Now, do you put that in a blender and really make a paste or a lo loose? Yeah, it's a paste. It's a paste. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Well, I can see that's really, you turned that up and it's really steaming well. Yeah. Excellent. Is it okay if I take a peek, Chef? Yeah. If you're steaming, no. keep a towel in your hand, right? Yeah. So that you don't get burnt, all right? And you can actually see these are becoming a little bit translucent, right? Yeah. They get a little bit lighter in color. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, you went, oh, so were you telling me don't take the lid off, even yeah, though I yeah. did? Uh, five minutes, we cannot open, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, the, it's a steam coming, yeah. and the temperature is very high here, right? Okay. It's, that's why it cook very fast. It's yeah. five minutes, we cannot eat a chicken, right? Right. It takes 15, 20 minutes. But it's mama, it's a very high temperature, it's steam come, and uh, this is a pot going to be very hot. Right, okay. And they cook fast. Okay. Let me make a, a comment uh, on that just for one second. You know, I, I took that off because I wanted to get an idea, but Chef just gave you some really great tip there. If you take that lid off, the cooking time is going to be longer. And, you know, we do not want to affect anybody's health if that chicken is not cooked. So I apologize for my... It's a good tip. I like it. Yes. All right, good. Now, you know, a quick question has nothing to do with the, the ingredients. I like this pot. Is that from India or it's, is that... It's from Nepal. Nepal? Yeah. Okay. I thought you were going to say China. No. Okay, good. <laughs> Now, is that aluminum or? Uh, it's a aluminum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. Almond. Great. It's a great steamer. Mm -hmm. Now, if you took that steamer out of there, could you actually cook in there if you wanted to do a dish? You know, was it good for cooking like a stew or, uh, or really just for steaming? Just for the steaming. Uh, okay. Well, that's great, Chef. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're all looking forward to try this. And uh, I can't tell you what a great job you did. So uh, hopefully, you know, we're about six minutes now. And let's plate these up and show the people, okay? Yeah. All right. You see the time, sir? But I don't have a watch here. I count to eight. All right? Yeah. And I multiply it times ten. Ten? Yeah, times, uh, two times five, right? something like that, whatever. Oh, okay. No, it's just uh, the magic of cooking. Mm -hmm. The six minutes went by so fast you didn't even realize it. <laughs> okay. okay? All right, so why don't we take some out yep. and we'll plate them. Is that okay? Yes. All right, here's your tongs. Okay. There you go. Oh, oh okay. They look like a Chinese steamed dumpling. Okay, Chef, you know what I'm going to do? I want to move the cutting board over here so that our camera can see what you're going to do with this. So just give me one second to move these ingredients, okay? Oh, okay. Okay. Just give you a little bit more room here. All right. Chef, why don't you move your board over here? Okay. Okay. That's great. All right. Now, you're going to check to see how it looks on the inside, right? Okay. All right. I the gloves. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's, it's a dog. Oh, yeah. Nice and white. Oh. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, it smells delicious. That ginger garlic mixture with in the cilantro, oh my God, does it smell good. Okay. Okay, chef. Now, why don't we plate up, okay, and okay. then uh, we'll be ready to close the show. Yep. Can I top off? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And they... Excellent.
So I know I was teasing you about the number eight, but is that what you would receive in Nepal if you ordered this in a restaurant? You get eight, or is this is this sort of like family style where a number of people would have this as an appetizer? The momos, one order, we have sort of eight pieces. Eight pieces. Yes. Okay. Excellent. All right. And then I'm guessing. And the, um, now I'm gonna put some tomato achar. Mm -hmm. It's a tomato pickle. It's mm. called in Nepal. It's a achar. 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 Excellent. And uh, this is spaghetti for the garnish. Yes. And I have the red cherry. Oh. Oh, I see what you're doing. Okay. That's cool. Mm. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> okay, Chef. So Mama is Very there. nice, Chef. Okay. Great job. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> very good. Well, Chef, we want to thank you. You did a great job. You talked about three different type momos. And if you want to watch this show again and learn how to shape the three different momos, then you can go to the Chef's Table Series TV website, rewatch the show, and the recipes will be on there. And again, we want to thank Chef Padam from Himalayan Bistro, who's a wonderful chef. He's got a great smile, very engaging guy. Thank you, You're Chef. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Great show. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Wine Pairing. My name is Carol O'Connor. I am here with John Paul. He is the Wine Manager and Certified Wine Sommelier of Blanchard's Wines and Spirits in Jamaica Plain. Today the focus, as you saw with um, Chef Joe, is Indian food. So I'm assuming that must, was that a little bit challenging to find a wine to go with Indian food? It can be, mm -hmm. um, because they use so many spices, um, because um, there can be kind of tangy flavors sometimes, right. or really rich flavors, and I mean, pairing wine with Indian food is not just a, it's not just like one wine's gonna go with Indian food too, because you have so many different dishes. Exactly, um, exactly. Like there's a lot of meat, chicken, tofu, vegetarian, and you know, like you've demonstrated in uh, many of the wine parents, there's so much complexity and so much going on in these ingredients yep. and food. It's like, oh, it's difficult to choose either, you know. Yeah, this might not be the right, right way to put it, but some uh, European cuisine is, is kind of more one-dimensional. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, you've got a piece of meat and a cream sauce or <laughs> whatever, you know, it's like kind of less spicy, less, right. less complex. And that's what these wines originally went mm -hmm. with. You know, most wines are, are coming from Europe or, um, from European grape varieties, is a European tradition. Um, so pairing with uh, international cuisines can sometimes be really tough, but also a lot of fun and sometimes uh, really eye-opening and mm -hmm. delicious. So, Perfect. So um, what did you choose today, a red or a white? It's a red. Okay. Um, you probably could have gone either way, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a, a red that's not too heavy. Um, it's a red with a lot of acidity, mm -hmm. but at the same time a lot of fruitiness. I just felt like it might work. Mm -hmm. Do you like this <laughs> but wine? I do. I love this wine. Yeah. It's a very well-balanced wine. It's relatively simple. There's nothing too heavy about it mm -hmm. um, or too... Um, it, it's not particularly oaky or anything. Um, it's just nice and fresh. And I kind of wanted to see how a red wine would go with chicken. I'll often try to do it with uh, like a slightly sweeter white wine or a really spicy, heavier white mm -hmm. wine. Um, but I've tried it with some reds too, some lighter, crisp reds with nice acidity like this. But I've never had it with a Barbera. Right, and I just felt like it might work really well. All right, let's so. try it. Yeah. I don't eat chicken, as a lot of you already know. But um, the sauce is amazing. Yeah. Now, um, so we'll do our twirls. Yeah. Now, do you, will this have a lot of tannins in it? Is it full bodied? Um, Barbera is usually not too tannic, and okay. from what I remember in this wine, it's not too tannic, but it's got a, a high acidity level um, and a lot of fruitiness. So the, the fruitiness kind of balances out that tart acidity and makes a really refreshing, kind of cleansing beverage. Oh, okay. Um, All right, that's, that's good to know. Ooh. Yeah, very fruity, kind of berry. I don't know, kind of smells um, full body to me, but yeah. you're the man, you're the wine man. I'm just your partner in crime when it comes to drinking. <laughs> it's a beautiful color. Yeah. 
It's a little cloudy. It's mm -hmm. not quite, uh, it's not like really clear, brilliant color, yeah. um, but that nice ruby red kind of thing, right. sort of purplish. Um, now and it, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, again, that's sort of, it's almost a little cloudy, which is probably a sign it wasn't filtered, um, uh, which a lot of high quality wines would not be filtered, or maybe they've been lightly filtered. So basically you've, you've left all, the, all those good flavors in there by not filtering it. Oh, oh my goodness, I'm learning so much from you right now, and I'm sure the viewers are too. All right, let's taste. Ooh, hmm. that's a lot of, um, I do taste acidity. Yeah, it's got that bright, tart acidity. Yes. I think that's great Correct. for a lot of pairings. Mm -hmm. um, wines that are low in acidity can sometimes be really tough to pair. Mm -hmm. um, you want, you want acidity. A lot of people will think, no, I don't want an acidity. That sounds bad. That sounds tart. That sounds gross. Um, but uh, wines with low acidity sometimes don't really match up to food. Um, mm -hmm. uh, as well as wines with high acidity. It's very tasty. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. It's got that nice cherry sort of flavor, right. like um, dark would, cherries. I myself would have this with a meal. I wouldn't pop open a bottle, <laughs> pop open the bottle and just have like a glass or two. I find it, I find it a little too strong for me, yeah. too much yeah. acidity. Yeah. Would you pop um, it open and have? Uh, maybe, I don't yeah. know. I think it'd be a fine aperitif wine maybe on its own, but maybe you would want something a little bit right. softer than this for you know, just to drink on its own. Or do you think it would be good to um, like pour it into a canister and let it breathe? Would that Possibly. Help or no? I don't expect this wine to age a very long time and okay. improve a lot with age. I think it will hold on for a good five years, maybe oh, okay. longer. Um, but I don't expect it, there to be much of an upside to, right. to cellaring it um, mm -hmm. for too long. Um, so for that reason, I think you can just pop it and pour it. You don't need to decant it um, or anything. All right, perfect. Yeah. Well, John Paul, again, you did a great job. I mean, I find this was very challenging to find a wine to go, but you, you're the wine sommelier. He does the research, and then we drink it together, which is always fun. Yep. Perfect. Cheers. Cheers. Awesome. So everyone, this has been the wine pairing of the week for Himalayan Bistro, so we'll see you next week. Hi folks, Steve LeCount, chef owner of Chiara Bistro in Westwood, coming at you this week with this week's chef's tip of the week. This week I want to talk about a piece of equipment that I find totally invaluable at the restaurant. Um, for relatively short money, you can buy one of these. They come in smaller sizes as well for the home use, uh, but it's called a food mill. And the reason we, we love it so much is we have a signature dish that's a potato gnocchi on there. And these food mills come with usually with a set of three different dies. This is the largest one. Um, and then there's a little spring-loaded blade here. So when you put that die in, you want that curved side facing up, and then you just place the blade in, into the hole in the center. And This is why the spring is there. You push down on this and hook it on, onto these little hooks. And from there, it's as easy as one, two, three. Um, what I love about this is, again, we make our potato gnocchi with them. This is what we pass our potatoes through. And, but there are many, many uses for this. You can do it for butternut squash, cooked pumpkin, uh, anything that carrots, whatever you like to have a, make a puree out of. Um, you could put a finer dye in there uh, with smaller holes if you want that puree to be totally smooth. But today I'm going to show you mashed potatoes because people often ask, uh, you know, how do you get those potatoes so smooth? Mine always have lumps in them. And I've got some cooked right behind me. And when we make mashed potatoes, uh, we like to use uh, Idaho potatoes because they have uh, naturally have a less of a water content. And you see my potatoes have no water in here right now. I did boil these. Uh, but I also, after I drain them, I put them back in the pot, put the burner on low, and let, let the, most of the water evaporate out of those, which is kind of important. You're getting nice, fluffy smooth potatoes. So I'm going to scoop those into this food mill. And this food mill comes with a little hook here. And you just hook that onto the pot like that. And from there you just grab this handle and you just crank the handle and it, and it passes 
It, it basically it mills the food through the holes in the die. And it's really that easy. Now I've, uh, behind me I've also heated up some a little bit of light cream and whole butter that I've put into the light cream. And just scrape the excess off there. Okay, so that's what it comes out looking like. Not a lump in this. So I'm going to season those a little bit, salt and pepper. My butter is already in, in the cream. I'm just going to add a little as I need it. And then just all I have to do from there is stir. Now today we all have food processors. It's one of the worst things you can ever try to make mashed potatoes with and I'll tell you why. Potatoes have natural gluten in them. It's just like flour. If you overwork it, uh, that gluten, um, it ends up being, the gluten is just what forms like elas elasticity in do bread doughs and potatoes have quite, quite a bit of natural gluten in there. So the more you move the potatoes around, the more of that gluten you're activating and you're gonna end up with a gummy, stretchy kind of potato. So if you ever try to do it in a food processor for mashed potatoes, I guarantee you they're gonna come out like glue. Uh, where these are nice and fluffy, they haven't got a lump in them, smooth as silk, and I'm gonna go eat these right now. So, Steve LeCount from Chiara Bistro in Westwood with this week's Chef's Tip of the Week, thanks. Hi, I'm Marjorie Gann and I work at Ethos in Jamaica Plain and we're an organization that serves elders and people of all ages with disabilities. We're also the nutrition provider for Southwest Boston, so we serve Meals on Wheels, community cafes and provide in-home nutrition consultation. I've been a registered dietitian, wife and mom for over 30 years, so I've developed some pretty good nutrition tips to help that are practical and easy to do. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about sodium. Sodium is half of salt, which is actually sodium chloride, and it's estimated that in the United States, people eat about, say, give or take 2,500 milligrams of sodium a day. Now, the Institute of Medicine says it should only be 1,500. And for people who eat a lot of salt, which probably would be males around 30, you're actually talking as much as, say, 4,000 milligrams. So here's a little quiz. Here are three foods, and they have different amounts of sodium. Which food on this table is the saltiest? Is it the hamburger bun, my little chocolate cupcake, or the ounce of potato chips? And I will bet that 80% of you will say it's the potato chips. But being sneaky, these are actually the lowest sodium food on this table. This is an ounce of potato chips. These happen to be a reduced fat potato chip, which have less salt on them. So these come in at 85 milligrams for this size serving. The cupcake, and this is a pretty little cupcake if you look at it, 135 milligrams, and you'd probably eat both of the ones that came in the package. And the hamburger bun is the surprise because that's got 220 milligrams of sodium. So if you add into this the hamburger, the french fries, and probably maybe four tablespoons of ketchup, we're really looking at 1,000 milligrams in this one meal versus the Institute of Medicine's recommendation of 1,500 milligrams for the entire day. So you can see why those 30-year-old men are getting their excess sodium. So the easiest way is to cut down on sodium, probably eat fewer processed foods, lots more fresh fruits and vegetables. And that's my tip for the day. I'm Marjorie Gann, and I'm here for Chef's Table. Thank you for joining me. Due to popular demand, we are going to re-air one of our most popular Chef's Tips of the Week segments. Hi, folks. Steve LeCount. Chef owner of Chiara Bistro in Westwood coming at you with this week's chef's tip. Uh, this week I just want to talk about an easy way to get pomegranate seeds out of the pomegranate. Um, I remember when we were kids and we used to call these Chinese apples and you know we used to quarter them like that and then we sat around the table and I think maybe my parents did it on purpose to keep us out of trouble and keep us occupied for a while and we would just take teaspoons and try to pick out through all this membrane that's completely throughout uh, a pomegranate. Uh, I love pomegranates, uh, great uh, winter use. Uh, you'll see them around all the time. Uh, they make beautiful holiday decorations, uh, but um, they are naturally loaded with antioxidants. It's one of the healthiest fruits you can eat. 
but they have a nice tartness to them and a nice crunch to them too. And I like to contrast in things uh, like salads with goat cheese where you have a soft goat cheese. Uh, you you uh, have a nice contrast to that with the, the crunch from the, uh, and the tartness of uh, the pomegranate. We also tend to use it a lot on duck dishes or chicken dishes with maybe a sweet glaze, something with like honey and molasses or maple. Um, you've got all that sugar going on on that, so you want something tart to slice through that and balance out that dish. So pomegranate seeds uh, seem to be perfect for that. Uh, but anyway, back to the original point. How do I get all those seeds out of there without spending half my life doing so? I just cut, cut it in half um, horizontally. Put your hand over a bowl and just like the kid you wanted to keep occupied for hours getting those seeds out, give it a good spanking with a, with a, a heavy kitchen spoon. And you'll see mostly just seeds come out of there. And to get the rest, just keep, keep banging on it with that spoon, and they will come out like that. And you'll have a bowl full of these before you know it. Steve LeCount, Chef Owner, Chiara Bistro, and that's this week's Chef's Tip. Hello everyone and welcome to the restaurant interview of the Chef's Table Series TV show. My name is Carol O'Connor and I am here at Himalayan Bistro located at 735 Center Street in West Roxbury. With me is Ram Detal. He is the owner of Himalayan Bistro. So Ram, thanks for being on the segment with me today. Now Ram, I've been here many times, but how long have you been here? In this location, yes. we are here for eight years. Eight years, eight that's years. great. Well, I'm sure you'll be celebrating ten years in a Absolutely. In two years, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, Ram, tell me what the, are the specialty dishes here at Himalayan Bistro? Well, Carol, we have uh, you know, dishes mm -hmm. from India, yeah. which is very popular. Right. As everybody knows chicken tikka masala. Right. And uh, shag paneer. Yep, those are, they are very, very popular. They yeah. are very popular mm -hmm. in America and mm -hmm. Europe. Everywhere, those are the Indian cuisine. Yep. And uh, tandoori dishes. That tandoori. Uh, tandoori. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tandoori, yeah. like, you know, all kinds of tandoori we cook in charcoal. Tandoor. That's right, the big tandoori. Big cook, tandoori. Kind of yeah. like naan, right? Uh, naan, we cook it in there as well. Naan and kebab. Got it. Or oh, kebab. kebab. Yeah, okay. Kebab. We cook there. Yeah. It's very, very good and a lot of people like it. Yeah. And we do have a, a Nepalese specialty from Nepal, which is uh, um, casual snacks from Kathmandu, momo. Momos. Oh yeah, momos. momos. I remember you made those yeah. um, on one of our sh the cooking show, segments. Cooking yeah, show, yeah, yeah, yeah. Segment. yeah. And momos. momos. I love momos. Yeah, and uh, we do have other aloo bodhi tama, which is from Nepal. Yeah. The mustard green, the green, green curry. Uh, oh, the or green kinds curry. Of green, green, green leaves. That's a dry green leaves. Yeah, leaves. Kinds of we use as a curry for mm -hmm. Nepalese cuisine, mm -hmm. and th that is very different than the Indian, and we use same spices as Indian cuisine, and we add more flavor on it, and those more flavor is called jimbu, jimbu. and timur, which is in only timur. Yeah. timur, which is only available in high mountain, high yeah. hills, and those are the spices that we have secret here, and we we use them for the Nepalese cuisine, wow. which is very good and. A lot of our customers love it. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. It's a different... Because I'm sure a lot of people, they come here and they order the same thing. So it's nice that you offer the tandoori and the Nepalese... Nepalese. Um, Nepalese yeah. um, cuisine. Can't yeah. pronounce words, yeah. as you can tell. Um, cuisine. Okay. Perfect. Excellent. Now, um, you've been in a number of events with me. We have did um, a Taste of Rosendale. Right. And you continuously do with me the Taste of Denim. Right. So we appreciate your, um, you know, contribution being participating in those events yes. and I'm, I, I'm finding that, do you find that more people coming into like enjoying Indian cuisine more and more? Yes, yes yeah. because when we display food, you know, taste them, yep. taste, taste, taste the people of yep. the, those area, they come here to eat. Oh you good. Know? Yeah, that's, yeah. Good. Yeah. that's yeah. perfect. That's, that is very good advertisement for us. And yes. Um, that is very good. To people who live there to know what is Indian food. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's good to go to tastings to get that idea of um, the different types of food. Um, tell me about your chef. What's his name and um, 
What's his experience? My chef is from Nepal. His oh. name is Padam Pokhrel. Mm -hmm. And he's from western part of Nepal. Mm -hmm. He has his uh, culinary degree from India oh, and wow. work for several hotels in Kathmandu, mm -hmm. like five star hotels. Wow. And then also work in cruise ship, cruise, cruise lines. Oh, yeah, the cruise, cruise lines? lines. And finally, he came here and settled here. Wow, he must have a lot of experience, he not had, only with Indian he, food, but yeah, all sorts had, of um, cuisines. Right, he had all sorts of cuisine experience, mm -hmm. and he is very good in Indian food as well. Oh, yeah. perfect. So I'm sure we'll be seeing some of his um, takes on many of these cuisines. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what, how often you open um, during the week? What are your hours? Here, in, uh, we, have, we open at uh, 11.30 yep. and close 11 o'clock at night, right. so seven days a week. Yep. And you have a lunch buffet. We have a lunch buffet yep. uh, from 11.30 to 3 o'clock. Perfect. Yep. So I heard through the grapevine that you are opening another restaurant. Tell yes. me about that. Yes, we are opening another restaurant in Newton. In Newton? Newton. And what's the name will it be? Have you decided on a name or is that a secret? I have not decided the name yet. So it's still secret yeah, everyone? It's still secret and uh -huh. the, the place is also still secret. The, the, the place but it's in Newton Center. It's in Newton Center? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. So can you give me a hint? Will you be opening in the fall or the we'll, winter season? We'll be opening in the fall. Perfect. Well, we'll definitely come visit your restaurant. Thank so you I look very forward much. to that. I thank you. So Ram, thank you for being on the restaurant interview segment with me. You welcome. Perfect, perfect. Thanks. So everyone, this um, this is Carol O'Connor with um, this week's restaurant interview segment with Ram Detail of Himalayan Bistro, and we will see you next week for the next interview. Uh, chef, I'm gonna make different types types of momos, not only one. This is different varieties, like of right. and then you shape it in yeah. the presses yeah. when it's done. Yeah. So can I see that, yep. chef? So you say. It, it really looks like a Peking ravi ravioli, so when you're doing it, you start at one end and just keep pinching all the way. But Chef just gave you some really great tip there. If you take that lid off, the cooking time is going to be longer. Yeah, I have okay. the red cherry. Oh, oh, I see what you're doing. Okay, that's cool. Oh, fantastic. The Chef's Table series is shooting on location in cities and towns across Massachusetts. If you would like to suggest your favorite restaurant or attend a live taping of the show, please visit theChef'sTableSeries.tv.